Welcome. It's lovely to see you. If you could introduce yourself and tell us what subjects you did at Sick Form College. Hi, my name is Katrin. I studied psychology, sociology and English literature. Fantastic. And so where are you studying now and what subject are you doing? I am studying psychology at the University of Manchester. When you were at Sick Form College, what did you enjoy about each of your subjects? I remember having difficulty choosing my subjects at A-level. I sort of switched around from them. Uh, there was no like consistent ones that I was always wanting to do. My sister took psychology and sociology A-levels when she was doing her A-levels. So I think I was primed to choose those ones and be interested in that. I remember hearing about all the different psychological studies and finding it really fascinating. So I think in the end, I, I chose those because I, I knew what she could do from them. And one of my friends was taking English literature. I really liked English literature at GCSE. So yeah, that one was, that one was an easy choice for me. And so then when you were in your kind of first year, how did you decide what course and where, which university to go for? It took me a while to decide those things. I really didn't know what I wanted to study for a long time. I don't think I really thought about university seriously until that year. I just didn't really think that top universities were something I could even attempt for. It just didn't cross my mind. And so when my friends were starting to apply and I was thinking about it, I really didn't know what I wanted to go into, but I really did like psychology. And so I think I just started researching courses that were to do with the subjects that I was taking, like sociological, psychological courses. And in the end, I just decided to go with pure psychology. I was thinking of doing education with psychology for a while, but I decided not to restrict myself too early on. And I knew that psychology go into a whole range of careers and other courses. And so I didn't, I didn't think it was a problem that I didn't have like a specific idea in mind too early on. I think that's exactly right. Psychology is such a broad subject and you can specialise later. Plus, such a good university like Manchester and a good brig course, you're learning essay skills, analytical skills. There are exactly. so many job opportunities afterwards that that can lead on to. And what have you enjoyed about the course since you've been there? I really have enjoyed how broad it is and how many units there are that focus on not only different aspects of human psychology, so the more biological side and then the more social side, developmental, but also that do focus on different kinds of skills. So I have a research methods and statistics unit where I'm learning statistical, statistical analysis, but then I've also just now been learning qualitative research methods, which I didn't know much about before and I actually really enjoy. So I do like how broad it is and how many how many opportunities can come from it. So I think you're right. The other thing that you're getting is you're discovering new things that you enjoy about your subject. And I think that's what's really great about university. A-levels is kind of just the starting point of an interest. Oh, definitely. And actually following that interest is really, really good and exciting. And you're seeing that come to fruition. Now, when you were at college, you would have written a personal statement and gone through the application process. What kind of things mm -hmm. did you do or think of and then write about in your personal statement? I was really nervous about writing my personal statement, as I'm sure most people are, um, because I had this perception that you had to have done so much in order to write a good personal statement. I thought, oh, I would have had to have a part-time job. I've never had a job before, so I didn't know what to write about. But honestly, and I don't want to just sound like I'm pressuring students to go onto the VLE, but honestly, the VLE didn't really help um, <laughs> because... I would see these masterclasses that were being advertised and going to some early applicant meetings. Now, I wasn't an early applicant. I didn't end up applying early, but I did go to some initial meetings and they just gave some very, very good advice. I would suggest going to some of those meetings, even if you don't think you're going to apply early. So from there, I learned about MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses. I believe that's the... Yes. Um, and... That was a really, really good way for me to not only learn more about the subject that I wanted to go into, I took a biopsychology one and also a mental health in adolescence course, and both of them were very different, but I found them very interesting. And so not only were they very fun <laughs> and quite easy, actually, I obviously was doing A-level, so I didn't have much time, but I still managed to squeeze those in. And I had a lot to write about in my personal state because of that. 
I am not surprised. Those sound amazing. MOOCs are absolutely fantastic. And I would always recommend students do that. But also the other thing that I can hear from what you therefore did was you liked your subject. You'd kind of just thought about which subject you wanted to do and considered which ones. So you kind of got a plan in place, even though that took a while, that's fine. And that's a great decision. And then what I can also see from what your university would have seen from your personal statement is you didn't just go to psychology lessons. You did, you pursued your interest. So you did one MOOC, not just one MOOC, you did two MOOCs in very different areas. And actually you did them exactly as you said, alongside your A-levels. So someone reading your personal statement would have said, okay, so this student doesn't just sit in her three academic A-levels and just absorb actually you've gone beyond and above and that's exactly what the top universities are looking for so that's what Manchester and all the other universities you applied for would have seen that kind of independence of thought that would have been really impressive to read I think it also just demonstrates a passion for that subject and I think that is I mean correct me if I'm wrong I think that's something that people want to read in your personal statement they don't want you to just be I mean, obviously, not everyone has like a subject that they're super, super passionate about, and that's fine. But there has to be a reason why you want to be studying that thing at university. And so if you just demonstrate why that is, then I think that's one of the key things. I agree completely. Now, if you were in year 12 at this stage, and perhaps you didn't know whether uni was for you, or you were kind of lacking motivation, some people struggle in their March mocks, and then they've since been at home learning what kind of things would you advise? Did you ever do badly in a subject? Did you ever have to kind of pick yourself up and keep going? Or tell me about your experience and what you would recommend for year 12s now. I did have a few assessments which didn't go as well as I wanted them to. I remember the first English literature essay I wrote because I did well at English literature at GCSE. I thought, oh, this is fine. I'll be fine. I'll do great. And then <laughs> I got a really not great mark, in my opinion. And I was really confused to begin with. But of course, A level is so much different than GCSE. And the way that you write and the way that you have to think is a lot more advanced. <laughs> a big piece of advice don't beat yourself up about it. I beat myself up so much during sixth form about not getting the grades I wanted or oh I should be studying all of the time I should be revising all of the time and honestly it, it didn't it got a bit unhealthy at some point and so just don't beat yourself up it's okay to do badly fantastic and actually as a matter of interest what did you get in the end in English Lit uh A star so you can do badly along the way but actually it's that kind of gradual process and that's so encouraging for students to hear because in those early months, that step from GCC to A-level, as you said, is huge. And actually, if you do do badly, yeah. it doesn't mean you're not going to come out with a fantastic grade. And that may take some time. And I think the other thing is that we are after lockdown next year for the second years. If they need to, they can go back into first year classes. Lots of subjects are going to offer different types of workshops to support students. And that's the other thing is that will be there. But I think it's so great for them to see someone who kind of perhaps had those early assessments where you're like, oh, that went terribly badly and then went on to be outstanding like you are. So any final hints and tips? I think that while you have this time at home, just find out what your passions are. Do reading, and it doesn't have to be necessarily academic reading, it can just be books that you like, or do your own research into subjects or areas that you're interested in. You know, do something fun with these subjects. You don't have to always view academic subjects as, oh, that's the thing I do at school. Some big messages that you've given, I think, are really useful. You need to find balance and actually make sure there is healthy balance between work and reading and your, your social life at the moment that'll be virtually with your friends and also find your interest at this time and pursue that you've also suggested using the vle and i think what we've seen from you is that you had an interest you sorted that out and kind of debated between different subjects and actually along the road it, it wasn't always easy you know coming out with some of the best grades in the country actually wasn't always like you weren't always set on that path it was that consistent, gradual improvement that got you there. So that's really helpful. Thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you.